I have a question for you. Where are you from? Can someone go with the mic, please? I am uh, Vinod from Punjab. Punjab. I am Runmai from Pune. Pune, okay. I am from Gurgaon. You are from Gurgaon, all right. I am from Surat, Gujarat. Okay, you are from Surat. Yeah, so if I ask everybody where are you from, you will say I am from Gujarat, I am from Maharashtra, I am from America, I am from Paris, I am from Bangalore and so on, right? That's the problem. You know where I am from? I am from this beautiful planet. And all our problems start only because we think we are from Surat or we are from Jaga or from LA or we are from Tokyo or we are from Bangalore or Chennai or wherever. We forget that we are from the planet Earth. If you have done an Art of Living course, there is a question where it says, where are you? So today I'm going to answer that question. Uh, where are you? This place, yeah, it, it started a very long time ago. To figure out exactly how long, I have a question for you. How much is a billion? A billion is one followed by nine zeros. But you know exactly how much that is? A billion seconds ago, it was 1983. One of my favorite movies was playing, Return of the Jedi. And a billion minutes ago, Jesus was still alive. And a billion hours ago, it was the Stone Age. We are going way back, five billion years ago. The sun had just finished for me. And there was a lot of this interstellar debris. And for half a billion years, this debris, these stones, they banged into each other. And smaller stones banged and made bigger stones, and bigger stones banged and made even bigger stones, and those became planets. And this was what our Earth looked like four and a half billion years ago. Yeah, it was a ball of fire, molten rock. Temperatures which were in excess of 12,000, 15,000, 20,000 degrees Celsius. Volcanoes, tornadoes, tsunamis, you name it, and all of it of fire. It was really, really your definition of hell. And as if things could not get any worse, something else happened. Another planet came and banged into us. The debris from that collision went 30, 40 kilometers into the space. And for some time, Earth had rings like Saturn. But gravity did its thing, and through this collision, what came was the moon, what we are going to be celebrating tomorrow. Around 3.9 billion years ago, all the planets in the solar system had finished forming, and there were still a lot of these meteors and meteorites which were left, and they were being attracted by the other planets and our planet's gravity. And so for 20 million years, there was bombardment. 20 million years we were bombarded by meteors, this planet. And this was an absolutely amazing thing. You know why? Because each of these meteors that came from space had salt in them, trace amounts of salt and trace amounts of water, very, very little water. And little by little, little by little, little by little, water came. And this water that was formed so many, many, many years ago is still the water that we are all drinking, that is raining, that we used to, you know, take baths with, that we used to water our plants with, that we wash our cars with. There is no new water, only this water. 3.9 billion years ago, the water had come, and we are just using it again and again and again and again and again. Approximately one and a half billion years then went, 3.9 say it came to one and a half billion years where the water solidified the crust. Remember it was all molten rock, then the water fell on it, the crust got solidified and this water seeped into the crust right down to the core where it met even hotter <laughs> substance and it evaporated and came back up. And that made what we call the primordial soup. Many vitamins, minerals got added to the water and then magic happened. The first one-celled creature suddenly came into existence. We don't know how, we don't know where, how this happened, it just happened. The conditions were right, that's all they say. And slowly over time, that one cell became two cell, two cell became three cells. And in the shallows of the oceans of that time, there were these bacteria called stomatolites. And they had a peculiar 
taste like you and me they like sugar yeah i always knew there was a purpose of sugar they loved sugar so they took the carbon dioxide which was abundant they took the water and they took the sunlight and created something called photosynthesis and through photosynthesis they released oxygen in the air and in the water and made sugar which they sat and ate for 2 billion years these stomatolites put oxygen into the water of the planet and into the atmosphere of the planet and made it suitable for life and amazingly these stomatolite colonies some of them are still alive and still functioning after that there was a tectonic shift earthquakes happened and this entire land mass called at that time rodinia there was nobody to call it that it is just that we have given that name rodinia it came up to the surface and along with it came a lot of volcanoes which erupted for another 10 million years volcanoes are erupting and throwing up gases of all sorts then for long time there was a lot of carbon dioxide which accumulated into the atmosphere around the earth and because of that sunlight couldn't get through so from fire we went directly to ice and the first ice age happened our planet became encased in 3 kilometers of ice and this stayed like that for a very very long time after a long long time and we are now at 600 million years almost yesterday in this scale of things the ice started melting it took 300 million years to melt as the ice melted a lot of oxygen came up and the ozone layer got formed now all of us know what the ozone layer is it stops the ultraviolet rays of the sun to come and hit us without the ozone layer we would all be fried so the ozone layer came so that life on earth life on the land could start there were plants and there were animals and then our friends the volcanoes came again they erupted greenhouse gases got into the atmosphere another ice age the entire species of plants and animals was extinct wiped out completely 100% over yeah and it was a good thing for you and me you know why because those are what the fossil fuels are all about these plants and animals died so that today we can drive our cars all right so they became the fossil fuel they became your petrol and diesel that we are using today and after this as usual there was another land mass that came up and if you look at this it will look very familiar because this is the origin of the continents as they are today they were all joined together and then they separated slowly 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 continental drift happened and during that time the dinosaurs came 230 million years ago the dinosaurs roamed on this planet and they stayed for 165 million years that's a bloody long time and it seemed like nothing on earth could shake them but something not of earth happened a meteor collision a meteor came and banged into the earth it was a huge rock 35000 feet high when it impacted meaning where aeroplanes are flying today that high it was when it impacted yeah and again huge amount of debris came carbon dioxide came ice age happened and the dinosaurs was extinct why because they were cold blooded creatures right the mammals they knew how to wear their woolies so they survived after this entire catastrophe yeah this this impact was like 1 billion hiroshimas 1 billion atom bombs exploding together after this we come to the age of mammals 65 million years ago and then 4 million years ago some chimpanzee decided to start walking on its feet just 4 million years ago and that is our evolution to the last where we are more or less of how we are now that was just 40000 years ago and the earth meanwhile the continents had drifted apart the ice caps had formed one more ice age happened in the middle but the mammals knew how to wear their warm clothes you know so they survived and earth as we know it 7000 years ago at the time of lord rama it became the way we know it today we are home to 8.7 million species and it took four and a half billion years to come to where we are today don't you agree that this should be preserved taken care of and cherished yes or no yes 
This is the history of where are you. Next time someone asks you this question, where are you? You can give them this whole lecture. Yes? Four and a half billion years, 8.7 million species, we are one of them. It is very nice and very wonderful that Gurudev on this Guru Purnima has said that we should look at the conservation of the environment because it really needs to be conserved. It really needs to be taken care of. There have been so many crazy things that have happened for us to be where we are today. Our version of life, what do we really need? Air, water, food, shelter, and hopefully a relaxed, calm mind and a healthy body. Everything else is a want. This is a need. So let's look at them one at a time. See, there are, there are many systems on the planet. The nitrogen cycle, the carbon dioxide cycle, the water cycle. You know, all these systems keep the planet going. There is one species which uses a particular thing and removes it as a waste product, which becomes something that another species uses for its sustenance. No, there, is, there are all these cycles that are going on. If you want to read more about this, go to an 8th standard textbook. 9th standard textbook, you will get everything. Okay, or Google it. I will not waste your time on it. What I want to talk about is the ozone layer. Remember all that water that melted, releasing oxygen into the atmosphere for so many 300 million years and forming that ozone layer? Remember that? And what is the importance of the ozone layer? It prevents ultraviolet rays from coming to the planet, right? And what's wrong with ultraviolet rays? Causes cancer, right? They cause cancer. You know, if it was only that much, there would be no problems. How thick do you think the ozone layer is? When we say ozone layer, it seems as if it's really fat, no? You know how thick it is? It is the size of a well-manicured fingernail, three millimeters. The ozone layer is only this thick. This is all that stands between us and interstellar space. All that stands between us and the mad ultraviolet radiation of the sun. And 15, 20 years ago, you might have heard of those chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, that were being released into the atmosphere. They were creating a hole in the ozone layer. And there is a hole there over the, over the ice caps. Yeah? And the hole is huge, some 24 million square kilometers. And it's OK, you know, the hole. But what would happen? We would get skin cancer. No, that's all you think. It's not that. Can you tell me what? gives the maximum amount of oxygen, what generates maximum amount of oxygen? Does anybody know? Trees. Wrong. You know, there are these plants in the sea, which are called kelp. They grow up to 40, 50 stories high. And these are the primary oxygen generators of the planet. They generate 80% of the oxygen. The trees only generate 20% of the oxygen. And the bad news is that the kelp is extremely volatile and sensitive to ultraviolet radiation. If the UV radiation increases just by another 10-15%, then the kelp will die. If the kelp dies, there will be no oxygen and it will really not matter whether you have skin cancer or not. So the hole in the ozone layer was a huge problem. And remember I said was, because many governments, many people on the planet got together and decided to do something about it. They banned aerosols, they banned CFCs. And in the last 15 years, the ozone layer has been regenerating and it has been repairing itself. So the good news is that yes, it can, the, the environment can be healed if everybody gets together and does it. Yeah, we were on the brink of extinction. We were on the brink of losing life, oxygen breathing life as we know it. But because intelligent decisions were taken, this has been reversed and it's slowly getting reversed. Slowly it's getting reversed. Like I said, the primary oxygen generator of the earth is the ocean. Now remember all those plastic bags that you use? <laughs> yeah. Wherever you throw them, sooner or later they go into the sea. You throw them into a river, you throw them into a lake, everything drains into the sea. In the Pacific Ocean, even in the Atlantic Ocean and even in the Indian Ocean now, there are these garbage patches, twice the size of Texas. Texas is huge, twice that size. There is, and nine feet deep, 
plastic in the oceans. We don't know, even if we remove all this plastic from the ocean, where we, where we will keep it? Every time you are using a plastic bag, you are contributing to that. Stop using plastic. Absolutely stop using plastic. There is no uh, possible reason you can give to use plastic anymore. Uh, don't say, Are, main nahi use karunga, to kya fark padega. Itne sare log use karte. Nahi. One, one person makes a difference. Okay, you do the maths. All right? So our oceans are being threatened by plastic. Okay, please stop using plastic. This is one thing that you can do immediately. Everybody knows about the greenhouse effect. Carbon dioxide goes up in the air. The radiation comes down into the planet. It bounces off the carbon dioxide layer and it heats up the planet. Because of the over concentration of carbon dioxide and methane, which are called greenhouse gases. Today, the greenhouse gas levels in the atmosphere are more than they have been in the last 500,000 years. The temperatures on the planet are warmer than they have been in the last 1,000 years. And this has happened in just the last 50 to 100 years. What nature has taken four and a half billion years to make, we as a species have managed to ruin in just 50 years. It is really sad, really alarming, and something to be really scared of. So what are the major sources of greenhouse gas emissions? The first is electricity. The second is the meat industry. People who eat non-veg food and support non-veg food. The third is transportation, going from here to there. And the fourth is the buildings that we stay in, that we live in, and that we work in. These are the four major causes. There are many, but this accounts for approximately 95% of the emission of the greenhouse gases. So we will take them one at a time. Electricity, transportation, and building constitute to greater than 65% of greenhouse gas emissions. And what can we do about it? Well, we can conserve electricity. The first thing, turn things off. If you are not using something, turn it off, unplug it. You know, I had a t-shirt. It said, turn things off when you leave the room. How would you like it if someone turned you on and left? Turn things off, switch things off, unplug. Change to LED lights. LED lighting is extremely efficient. Just recently in my house in the ashram, we have converted everything to LED lights and uh, it makes a huge difference to the electricity bills. Reduce heating or cooling. You know, there are people who will put the AC at 16 degrees and then wear a sweater. Keep the AC at 23 degrees, 24 degrees. Even in your fridge, many people keep the thermostat very cold. Food need not be so cold in the fridge. Yes, anyway, why are you eating old food? Okay, so like that, reduce heating and cooling. Use a solar water heater. They have become super cheap now. And in India, we have so much sunlight. There is no requirement of gas heater or electric heater when we can just get it from the sun. Yeah? And use clean electricity as much as possible. You know, use solar electricity, use wind power. These are very beautiful forms of electricity. It is like plugging into mother nature. And it has become quite cheap now. Yeah? The Modi government has done something amazing in Gujarat. They have created these huge solar farms. And Gujarat is one of the only states in India which is energy surplus. They produce more electricity than they actually use. If Gujarat can do it, so can the rest of India. What's the problem? So whoever we are giving our vote to, tell them, look, I am giving you this vote. I want this done. Many people get together, form pressure groups and pressure the governments and pressure the municipalities into bringing more and more of clean energy into our country. The second thing is getting around. Well, the best thing you can do is walk or cycle. It is good for you. It reduces your belly. As you can see, my belly has reduced a lot since the last, last time you might have seen me because I have been walking a lot. Yeah. And it is fantastic for the planet. So it is great for the planet, great for you. Walk or cycle. Okay. If you can't, use public transport as much as possible. Especially in cities like Bombay, definitely use public transport. Bombay, I cannot understand why people go by car. It's only one big traffic jam. Whereas in a train, you can reach so fast, isn't it? Delhi now, the Delhi metro has become fantastic. Bangalore, hopefully, Namma metro will happen in our lifetime. Carpool, if you are driving your own car, always take someone along with you. Make sure they want to go. <laughs> yeah. 
and use hybrid cars. They are expensive, but in the long run, they save a lot of money because the emissions are less than one third and the fuel cost is less than half. So hybrid cars, Toyota is coming out with some fantastic cars. It's, it's my favorite company. And many other companies are coming out with fantastic cars, which are hybrid cars. Next time you are thinking of buying a car, buy a hybrid car. If you cannot afford it, wait a little bit, save some money and then buy a hybrid car. It's good for you, it's good for the planet and definitely good for your wallet. Okay? So, so that's transport. Homes. Look at those homes. These are such beautiful homes, aren't they? Right? These are earth construction. Something called cob, something called adobe, something called rammed earth. Okay, they are old, old techniques, thousand, ten thousand year old techniques which are now coming into revival. These are so soft on the planet. They, they don't need air conditioning because in the summer they are cool, in the winter they are hot. Yeah, there are like, I can talk an entire talk on the, on the benefit of earth construction. Okay, and this can even be built now till four, five floors. Okay, so if you have a plot of land and are thinking of making your own house, think of making a fairy tale cottage like that, <laughs> rather than one of the dabbas that we see all over the place. Finally, we come to food. You know, electricity, transportation, building, you can cut down, but you cannot eliminate. No? You can unplug, but you will need electricity. You will need the LCD projector to show the presentation, right? You will need the lights, you will need the fans. If you want to go from Bombay to Bangalore, you cannot walk. You will have to take a train, isn't it? But every single meal, you can make a choice. You can eat vegetarian food. What are the things that happen when you eat vegetarian or vegan food? What a conservation. Food for many, many, many more. We save forests. We have much better personal health. And we grow a little richer. Let's look at them one by one. If you want to grow one kilo of tomatoes, you need 174 liters of water. That might seem a lot. But if you take one kilo of chicken, it is 6,170 liters of water. And one kilo of beef is 39,000 liters of water. If all the water in the world from 3.9 billion years ago was put in this bottle, this much is drinkable water. Water is really, really precious. People want to eat meat, they are depriving other human beings of water. Where is 39,000 liters of water and where is 174 liters of water? Or 370 liters of water for apples? You cannot tell me that I will eat meat because I like the taste. You cannot tell me that anymore when you look at the statistics. If you eat vegetarian food or vegan food, vegan means you don't even eat dairy products, then you can leave that shower on 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and you will still save more water than a person eating meat. You know, they say you should conserve water while playing holy. No, no, you play holy with as much water as you want. Just don't eat chicken. Just don't eat goat. Just don't eat beef. Don't eat these things. There is more than enough water for all of us, provided it is managed intelligently. Okay? You can leave a shower like that on 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and still you will not spend more water than a person eating meat. Isn't that amazing? Yes, so all us vegetarians here, we can take long baths, huh? no problems. <laughs> Since we are talking about water, I thought I would talk a little bit about what Art of Living has done about water. Yeah, so we have made check dams and we have done rainwater harvesting and we have done tree plantation, we have done groundwater recharging. But one of the most exciting things that we have done is river rejuvenation. Yeah, that's what we want to just, I just want to give you a glimpse of the phenomenal work that our volunteers have done. There is this river called Rena River in Latur district of Maharashtra. On 8th of March 2015, it looked like that. On the 15th of May, just after Gurudev's birthday, it looked like that. Our volunteers, the villagers, the Gram Panchayat, they got together and dug this huge tract where the river used to flow. On 6th June,
1.26 billion liters of water is stored. 2,000 acres of land is irrigated and 20,000 people are directly benefited. Yeah. This entire project cost us about 3 crore rupees. Government estimate was around 15 crore rupees. If you are working in a corporate, please join Art of Living for water conservation projects like this through your CSR activities. We can do so much more. We have already done quite a few rivers. There are some 12 or 13 rivers that we have already rejuvenated, but much more needs to be done. Our country need not suffer from drought, from famine at all, if a little bit of money is put in the right place, in the right way. Good. So land, two and a half acres of land will produce energy needs of people if cabbage is grown, 23 people. If potatoes are grown, 22 people. Like that, wheat is grown, 15 people. Chicken, two people. B for egg, one person. Two and a half acres of land is required to create eggs for one person. Half of the land that is available on the planet is used to grow food for livestock. Half the land on the planet is used to grow food for livestock, for cows and chickens and pigs and God knows what else people eat. Half the land. Can you imagine if everybody went vegetarian, we could all be living in five bedroom hall kitchens. There would be so much land. Today land prices are so high, why? Because half the land of the planet is gone in feeding livestock. It's so ridiculous. Stop eating meat. And don't just stop eating meat. Make other people stop eating meat. Invade their privacy. <laughs> Tell them, do you know what you are doing? Stop them from eating meat. Because of this meat eating, our rainforests are being burnt. We are losing one acre, 44,360 square feet of rainforest every second. Every second. Because they require that land to grow grass so that they can, they can put the cows over there to eat, to eat that grass. In one square mile of rainforest, there are more species than in the whole of United States of America. And we are losing them at one acre a second. God knows how many cures of how many crazy diseases have been burnt away just like that just because people want to eat meat. This has to stop. If it does not stop, by 2050, there will be no forest left on this planet. And 2050 is not so far away. Stop eating meat. Stop others from eating meat. Please do it. 840 million people die of hunger every year. Starvation. Have you ever felt hungry? You have been out, you have been away from where you can eat food and you have felt that sensation in your stomach, I need, I need to eat. Can you, can you imagine dying of that sensation, of that feeling? Dying because there is not enough for you to put inside your mouth? 840 million people die every year because of hunger. The population of the United States of America is just 320 million. It is just 4% of the world's population. Only 4%. If only the Americans went vegetarian or vegan, there would be food for 1.4 billion people. If only 4% of the world's population went vegetarian, there would be enough food for 1.4 billion people. Can you imagine if everybody went vegetarian, how much food we would have? There is so much that this planet has blessed us with. It is just greed. It is just cannot think beyond the tip of my own nose. That because of that, so many people are dying of something that they need not die of at all in such a horrible, terrible way. Amazingly, the problem is reversed in America. You know, in Bangladesh, 55% of people, health is compromised because of under, underfeeding, malnutrition. In America, 55% of the people's Health is compromised because of overfeeding. 
because of McDonald's. Don't let me get started on that. Yeah, there are enough videos on YouTube. I don't need to make one more year. Okay? Don't step into the McDonald's gate. Don't do it. Not good for you at all. Eating meat is a doctor's nightmare. You've heard of all these diseases, no? Mad cow disease, bird flu, E. coli, salmonella, listeria, horrible diseases. All coming from the fact that meat, these cows and pigs and chickens are fed antibiotics to make them yield better. Yeah? A typical cow will live for 20 years. In a factory farm, it lives only for three milkings. Three milkings, after that they kill it. And they put so much of antibiotics into them. You know, in America, the entire population has three million pounds of antibiotics for health-related issues, the population. The livestock is fed 25 million pounds <laughs> just to increase their yield. And all these antibiotics are sitting in their systems, in the meat that you are eating. And so you become resistant to various drugs. So God forbid you fall sick, a doctor cannot even treat you. We are back in the dark ages. You know, there are only three reasons a doctor will recommend that you eat meat. Number one, he has not done enough research. Number two, he is corrupt, he is being paid by somebody. And number three, it is possible that you have a life-threatening disease which can be solved only through eating of some sort of animal protein, some sort of animal meat. But that is very, very minuscule. Even Ayurveda recommends this in very, very rare circumstances. Non-veg food as medicine. For the vast population, there is no need to eat meat at all. Absolutely not. Yeah? You are compromising your health completely. If you step back and look at the data on meat and cancer, the optimum amount of meat you should eat is zero. Cancer is directly related to non-veg food. In fact, I heard Gurudev once say that people who have had cancer and it has gone away through whatever therapy, if they even touch meat, 100% relapse will happen. There is a direct correlation between eating meat and having cancer. In areas where meat is scarce, where meat is not there, cardiovascular disease is unknown. There are no heart attacks, there are no bypasses, there are no angioplasty, nothing is required where people don't eat meat. Okay? There is some tremendous correlation between meat and diseases like heart diseases, cancer, obesity, diabetes. The meat industry has contributed to more deaths than every single war every single automobile accident and every single natural disaster in the last hundred years. More deaths have happened because of the meat industry than all these things combined. Stop eating meat. <laughs> Tell others, stop eating meat. Eat vegetarian or vegan. Please do this for yourself and for the planet. Most importantly, eat vegetarian food to show compassion. You know, we are at the top of the food chain. This does not mean we have the license to eat the food chain. We have to take care of the food chain. Right? You look at these animals. How can you want to eat these things? Such innocent, beautiful creatures. Have compassion. Yeah? See somewhere in your heart whether you can speak up for those who have no voice to speak. Stop eating meat of any sort. All right? Yes? yes. Thank you. The, the, the argument that I always hear is, but if I don't eat meat, from where will I get the proteins? Uh, you know, I want to do bodybuilding. I want to have a great sexy body. Let me introduce you to three people. Surya Namaskars, a little bit of exercise, regular sadhana, fantastic bodies, yeah? You know, I have also started going to the gym, next year maybe I will remove my shirt. <laughs>
100% vegetarian. Ashram food, okay, it can be done, it's not a big deal. So please don't tell me where will I get my proteins from, the same place these guys got it from. And now we come to the most insidious pollution of all, mind pollution. Yeah, we have talked about air pollution, water pollution, land pollution, body pollution. But there is something called mind pollution. Have you noticed you walk into some place and suddenly you feel uneasy? Has it happened? You feel, yaar, idhar nahi rana hai. I don't want to stay here. Somehow I don't like it here. How many people it has happened? Yeah, almost everybody, right? And have you noticed there are certain places where you come, you just feel great, like when you come to the ashram, for some reason you feel nice. How many people this has happened? Yeah, everybody. <laughs> Isn't it? Right? So there exists this vibe. There are certain people you get attracted to that you feel like spending time with. Other people you feel, thoda, headache, mind pollution. They don't have calm, relaxed minds. And they give out those frustration, anger, tension, distress into the atmosphere, which you can feel. The quality of your life depends on the state of your mind. The quality of your life depends on the state of your mind. In fact, the quality of other people's life around you also depends on the state of your mind. Yeah. See, you can be in a very, very beautiful environment. You could be seeing a fantastic sunset. But if your mind is not all right, you know what thought will get? Kitna time lagega isko? Kya bhagwaat hai? Isme kya hai? What's the point? So what is the advantage of a calm, peaceful mind? There are two, according to me. There are many, but two really big ones. One, when life is great, when life is fantastic, you can appreciate it. Can you appreciate life? Can you appreciate good things if your mind is not okay? No way. Right? So you can appreciate the wonderful things that life has to offer when, you're, when your mind is relaxed and calm. And on the other side, when life goes wrong, when things go wrong, when life sucks, and it has a habit of doing that, a calm, peaceful mind will allow you to take rational, intelligent decisions. So in good times, you can appreciate. In bad times, you can act intelligently. So it is imperative, most important to learn how to meditate. You know, we talked about so many things. Unplug your laptop, switch off the lights, conserve the water, carpool, don't eat meat. You hear all this, you say yes, yes, yes. Then you go back and continue doing. Don't use plastic and then continue doing it. Why? because there is no control on the mind. I think the biggest problem this planet faces today is not all the things we talked about so far. It is just that we have no control over our mind. We have never learned to tame the mind. I'm sure if people have relaxed, calm minds, they will all be taking good decisions where all the things I have talked about today would be natural and obvious to do. And one of the ways that I know personally of calming the mind is meditation. There are the three golden rules of meditation. I want nothing, I will do nothing, I am nothing. And the first two are cool, I want nothing, okay, just for a few minutes I want nothing, all right, I will sit, I don't want anything. I will do nothing, brilliant. <laughs> yeah, all my life my parents told, are old, kai kar. No, come on, get up, do something. Meditation gave me 100% license to sit there and do nothing. Yeah, it was made for me. So, I want nothing, I will do nothing, no problems. But I am nothing. Come on. Right? So, I struggled with that for a long time and then I came up with this. You know, we live in a place called the Milky Way Galaxy. We are somewhere down there. Not even seen. Na? Something like Chickpet in Bangalore. <laughs> Nobody goes there really. In the millions and millions of stars in the Milky Way, our solar system is over there. Some obscure corner. And it has one sun 
You know that thing that rises and sets every day? Now, did you know something? 99.86% of the matter in our solar system is in the sun. Only 0.14% is Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, asteroids, comets, and all the other objects that are there in the sky in our solar system. Only 0.14%. In that 0.14%, there is the Earth. In that Earth, you and I. And the Milky Way galaxy is just one galaxy. There are billions of other galaxies. Yeah, We are not even like the bacteria in the ant stomach. <laughs> Given the vastness of the cosmos. So when you say, I want nothing, I will do nothing, and I am nothing, you say, yeah, <laughs> actually, you know what, I am nothing. So today, we will sit and meditate for a few minutes, for a little while, okay? Uh, everybody who is watching this live on the webcast, I invite you to also sit and meditate with us. Hmm? I, I think it is one of the most important skills a human being can learn. It is that which separates us from, from animals, really. Yeah? Animals can stay awake, animals can sleep, animals can dream. Humans can stay awake, humans can sleep, humans can dream. But animals cannot meditate, only humans can meditate. So it is the distinguishing factor between an animal and a human being. Yeah? And as a human being, if you are not meditating, I don't need to say anything more. <laughs> right? So for tonight's little session of meditation, I want to call the expert on meditation. Come on, guess who? <laughs> Dinesh will conduct a guided meditation. He speaks in Hindi and English. Mostly, he translates whatever he speaks in Hindi into English. In case you don't understand the language, don't worry. Just relax and effortlessly follow whatever instructions you can. Enjoy. Let's sit still with the spine nice and erect and eyes open. If you're looking straight, that's 90 degrees to the vertical. Look down, 30 degrees. So somewhere ahead of the tip of your nose. And look to your left. See the right side of your nose. Then look to your right, see the left side of your nose. Do this a few times. Now look up to the ceiling, see your eyebrows and look down, maybe your moustache or your upper lip and up and down, up and down. And now fix your gaze. 30 degrees. So your eyes are open, you're not seeing anything. You may feel like closing your eyes, but don't. Gaze is fixed. And slowly close your eyes a little more, about ten percent open. Just two percent open, it's like a ray of light entering, just crack open.
let the eyes close fully. <clears throat> Gentle, joyful breaths in and out. body is still and relaxed, your sight is still and your mind is becoming still. The body is like the wick of a candle, the mind is like the glow. अगर हमारा शरीर एक बाती है, तो मन ज्योति है, प्रकाश है। मन चारों ओर फैला हुआ है, the mind is all around. Let the mind expand. Man ko fail ne de. The mind expand more and more. Let it fill up this whole yagyashala. And let it expand, fill up the entire ashram. Man ko fail ne de, pure ashram me aapka man fail gaya hai. Aur fail ne de man ko, jitna aap vishram me jate ho, utna man aur fail ta hai. Let your mind expand more and more. The more your mind relaxes, the more it expands. The more your mind expands, the more it relaxes. Or felne de man ko is pure shahar me, is pure desh me, yaha ke peed, पहाड़, नदियाँ, बादल, इस पूरी पृथ्वी पे आपका मन फैल गया है। Let your mind expand the entire city and the country, the trees and the mountains. The rivers, the clouds, this entire earth. Relax more and more. Let the mind expand. Almost full moon. Chant tak fell ne de. Chant ki thandak mehsus kare. हमारे हजारों लाखों जन्मों में इस चांद ने हमें देखा है। Feel the coolness of the moon. This moon has seen us for thousands of lifetimes.
Keep a smile on the face, even the moon is smiling at you. चेहरे पर एक मुस्कान रखें चांद भी मुस्कुरा रहा है मन को फैलने दें सूरज तक असीम गर्मी को महसूस करें द माइंड एक्सपैंड अप टू द सन फील द ट्रिमेंडस हीट ऑफ द सन and let it expand billions of stars and heavenly bodies aur fainle de man ko arbo karbo tare sitare is pure brahmand mein aapka man fail gaya hai your mind has filled the entire creation relax more and more koti kalp vishram एक तरंग जो पूरे ब्रह्मांड में है जो हमारा आदि और हमारा अंत है उस ओम का आप उच्चारण करते हैं प्रसन्न चित्त से कुछ गहरी सांसें लें टेक फ्यू जॉयफुल ब्रेथ्स ब्रिंग अ लिटिल मूवमेंट इन द बॉडी शरीर में कुछ हलचल ले आए कैन स्ट्रेच योर आर्म्स एंड लेग्स बैक एंड द नेक बिकम अवेयर ऑफ द बॉडी एंड द सराउंडिंग्स एंड विथ अ स्माइल स्लोली ओपन योर आई शरीर और परिसर के प्रति सजग होते हुए मुस्कुराते हुए धीरे धीरे आंखें खोल सकते हैं नेवर फगेट दिस नेवर फगेट दैट इट हैज टेकन नेचर फोर एंड हाफ बिलियन इयर्स टू ब्रिंग द अर्थ टू हाउ इट इज टुडे नेवर फगेट दैट वी आर शेयरिंग द प्लैनेट with another 8.7 million species possibly many more never forget that we are the only species on the planet who can actually make decisions about the planet about our lives yeah even if you do a few things that we talked about today don't use plastic stop other people from eating meat i know most of you don't eat meat 
yeah? Meditate, plant more trees, yeah? uh, conserve electricity, so many things we talked about. Each of us, if we contribute, I'm sure we can make our planet a much more beautiful, much more greener, much more safer place to live in. Uh, from Dinesh and me, we wish all of you a very, very happy Guru Purnima tomorrow. And tomorrow, when the moon looks at us, I hope there is a smile on her face. Okay? So let's make the moon smile. Let's live a greener, more peaceful, more happier, more healthier life. Think more about our planet. Do your sadhana seva satsang. And as Guruji says, be happy. Jai Gurudev.